this is the normal ratios for yes. this class. Um, yes, a ratio would be about 1 to 7 okay. and it's a, a huge strong point for the students at Tibbian areas for the small classes and small classes. It's an absolute privilege being able to teach maths. <laughs> it's an absolute privilege to be able to teach maths to such small classes and such willing students who work so hard. Yeah. We do this every Friday afternoon for Friday Sport and part of the reasoning behind it is to get kids safe in the water and in the ocean and provide like, a fantastic experience while using a local area. What's the class you're doing now? Uh, we're doing Level 3 Chemistry by VC. And uh, VC means? Uh, video conferencing. Is Level 3 Chemistry is an option by teacher, student, I guess, at Chiviet. Then we go meet up once a week with another teacher and we do a one hour lesson and then we work on it over the week until the next lesson. Do you have any backup uh, from any of the local teachers uh, or support um, you in this? Yeah, we've got Mrs Knight who's our E Dean, I think that's what they call it. She overviews us and then also Mrs Hewitt, the science teacher who specialises in biology, helps us and makes sure we're on task. So you really don't miss out on anything then, do you, in terms of being in a remote school like Sif or an area school like Sif Cheviot? No, no, I think it benefits us more. <laughs> teacher but I'm not a qualified flying instructor. Um, I used to be a pilot in the Air Force and um, I've got a great passion for flying. Uh, I haven't flown for many years but um, I now do all my flying on uh, basically on a simulator. Um, the great thing here at Cheviot is that students have a, a, a fantastic opportunity to um, take part in a, a program called Gateway and uh, we've had a number of students go through this program and it actually gives them the opportunity to uh, experience the aviation industry and they also get three hours um, of actual flying time on the road. And um, this term uh, we've been doing obviously pay and help. Uh, what we've been doing, the main focus has been Hawara, which is a Māori health concept. And there's four parts to it. Tahatinana, which is the physical, which they're going to demonstrate for you uh, in a minute. Uh, and then there's Tahatininara, which is mental and emotional health. Tahawairua, which is spiritual health. And Tahafana, which is uh, social uh, family health. So we talked about all these things in the theory and the health part of it. And um, the students can demonstrate for you now. Uh, Society is something when they go on to NCA, um, NCA level 1, 2, 3, it's an important concept, it's a base concept really for the NCA program and it's a, it's a really useful concept as well. Um, it's got a, a holistic way of looking at it which is probably better than any, um, any sort of western cultures or any other theory I've looked at.
to um, to share the, the amazing things that are happening here at Schoolhill. I hope that the community can see that the teachers here are high quality. I hope that they can understand that our kids are getting a phenomenal deal. That they, you know, that they're almost guaranteed to succeed if they stay here. We'll look after them. You know, we'll put them out the other end, ready to work. Hands are tied in a lot of ways in that, you know, for year 9 and 10 and 11, students have to do English, they have to do maths, they have to do science. There's no, whatever school you send a child to, they, they have to do those subjects. Um, it's not until year 12 and 13 that you do get that, that where the sciences break out into, into the three different sciences that then you can get more options in year 13 than we can provide here. Mm. But yeah, those year 9 and 10, whatever school you go to, you're going to have, they have to have a language offered, they have to do PE. We provide all of that here with smaller classrooms, um, smaller classes, that's, you know, better deal. Okay. Um, we, we look at every individual child and, and look, we talk to them about where they want to go, what they want to achieve. We look to see what their needs are. Are they highly academic? Are they less academic? Are they going to go into a farming career? Are they going to go into medicine and then we cater for their needs and pull the bits out of the, the curriculum that, that meet their needs, look at the VCs that, that are op an option for them. We get the gateway and the, and the um, star programs and, and if they're going to go down hospitality pathways we look at bringing in some barista training, we look at um, if they want to be engineers, they go into the local garages and work there one day a week. If they're looking at going to early childhood, they go to the early learning centres. One day a week they spend the day there working with the children, working with the team. So they're being prepared so that when they leave school, They've got these skills in their in their, in their, in their kit. They're, they're ready to go. Anything's possible. We had a student come to us this year. He wants to um, do professional golfing uh, course. Anything's possible. Um, which and you were able to organise that? We can. We are looking into that. We've, yeah, we've, we oh, did we... find a course in Auckland, but Claire wanted to go and to the students. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's possible, and that's the thing. That's the beauty here because we know our kids intimately. We know their families. We know the kids. We know what they're looking for. We, look, we know where they want to go. And Claire is amazing. She'll she'll just source anything that's possible. It's awesome. So who is this angel, Claire? Shall I go and get her? Good stuff. So how do you know, so a student comes to school, how do you know what to offer them? Well we discuss it with them, we um, like to get the parents involved, Yeah. we like to, because um, full parent backing is essential, yeah. plus they're going to get 100% from the school, We um, and then we see what they like. Yeah. I mean this is not a, you know, they can, it's like a taster course, mm. so they can see where their future is going, mm. and of course we've got school being and we can take them anywhere. Mm. The student, the young man in question, I've got him going over to a local business yep. and we're going to start up some units with the motor mechanics. Great. With a uh, with one of the providers in town, um, Avon City Ford. Yep. Because so he was out. interested in doing this, he was doing it on the weekend, wasn't he? We were doing it part time anyway, yes, wasn't he? Yes, he was working at one of the garages in Parnassus there, so oh, yeah. I don't know if I should have said that. Yeah, no, that's okay. And that, so that means then that he's he was what he, want, what he wanted to do, he was doing it in his own time, and now we can do it through school and he can get some credits for yes, it. Yes, that's yeah. correct, because yeah. he's got a passion for the motor industry. So, yeah, so, so he goes out one day a week? One day a week to one of our providers, so that we can do some units there. Yeah, yeah, nice. And who else have we got? We've got um, another student going out doing some barista work. Yes, we have out. HSI. I've got a magazine here, um, one of the booklets. Yeah. And they'll be doing some units through the HSI and our provider across the road at the Cheviot Tea Rooms so who have been great to us. So that means that if they do some credits from here then they can go down the path of hospitality yes. if they want to? Yes, yeah. they will be. They okay. gain a lot of credits through there and we're really lucky to have... And that's looking at food preparation as well as, as baristering and yes. what other credits can they get? Oh, yeah. look, huge, huge, you know, the possibilities are amazing. Mm. Right through the basic food safeties onto, you know, it just it's never ending with what we can provide for them yeah. with the hospitality. So we look at each child and go, what are you, where are you going, what do you need and what can we... I think it's amazing because we can tailor base these um, mm. courses to them, we can just make it fit for them. Yeah. Also with the STAR courses we have some agriculture yeah. courses coming and up. And I was just saying before, because well, um, you created the fence at the... Yes, yes, ago. the yeah. fence, we're fencing course, we've got that coming back up on again. Um, we've also got the chainsaw safety, quad bikes, fencing, tractors and health and safety. Right, so, yeah. what actually aims so how many students have we got coming into that? 
We have six students, right, that we're going to put on this course, and it will all aim towards a national certificate in agriculture. So it skills. gives them the two things, doesn't it? It gives them the certificate in agriculture, but it also gives them credits towards NCEA. Yes. Yeah. The teachers here are extraordinary. Pretty much if a student comes through our school for NCEA, they will pass NCEA, we have a 100% pass rate. Most years, most of our students get 100% pass, or 100% of our students pass NCEA at all yes. three levels. It's a phenomenal record. Most schools across New Zealand are averaging about 70 to 80, yes. 70 something, 80%. We're getting 100% most levels most years. So what do you put that down to, Jen? Our teachers know our kids. They work yes. hard, people like Claire, they know what the kids need, they, the kids don't get a chance to slip out of the system. No, we, they don't. We know where they are, mm -hmm. we know what they need, we put pressure on them, we know you've got to get another five credits, this is how we're going to do it, you don't get the chance to back off. When exams start, most high schools, they go on study leave, our kids stay here, and we keep them working, and they've got exams, but we help them to study. We've got study, the teachers, the secondary teachers were concerned that the kids didn't know how to study, so now we've just put in a program where all the year 11 to 13s, every fortnight, have a study session where they are taught how to study. Make Cheviot Area School your first choice in education. Pop in and see them any time, or you might like to give them a call on 03 319 87 87 or email the office at office at cheviot.school.nz. to pick Shivit Area School because it's such a good community and the longer they stay in here the longer they knew all the teachers and don't afraid to go and ask questions I do I do all the time I work across the road I do all come here and check everyone up and check all the teacher and ask about the kids and stuff what they up to and just don't afraid to ask and they're quite glad to come and help very 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 helpful So first of all, she wanted to, to be a vet. So she took all the whole way down the vet clinic. She and um, she and us went to Vietnam for the, um, volunteer work, work on the, the three different hospitals over there, the disabled hospital, the baby one, and um, the same age with her to prepare to go out the world, the old orphanage. And she came back, she said um, she prefer to go and help those kids and still become a vet. That's changing. That, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, because yeah, I did tell my kids and I say it's only you to stop you from doing anything in life. If you want to something, go for it. And uh, hopefully they will stick to it. Oh, I'm sure there's lots of things, but what I really like about it is it's also because um, it's small, so everyone knows everyone and they're not a number, and you can't get away with anything. Mm. Everyone knows who you are. Cool. Um, this year, I teach Spanish over video conferencing. I have nine different schools, as far up as Thames, and as down as far down as um, South Westland Area School. So, I don't have any students here this year. This year, I just don't have any students here at Chibet. So, twice a week, language gets two slots a week. You'll talk to Zach and Evelyn, and they have one hour a week. Um, languages get two. So I meet with them twice a week, they do their work, I put all the work on to the website and they do what we can't cover in class. Okay. We've had some good success rates. Yeah? yeah. What, what, what do you mean? Well, um, two years ago in particular I had one young woman, not from this school, and she knew no Spanish when she came in. She got excellences through everything. It's, I mean, it was her. She did it. She was amazing. And um, this year she's overseas on a full scholarship. I think the thing is that people would construe having a teacher which is, which is, you know, they're miles away as a negative, when in fact you're obviously still showing that it doesn't matter where the teacher is. No. If, if the student wants to learn Spanish or... It doesn't any, matter. Any, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll do it, yes. Indeed. I think that's probably, yeah, that's, that's probably the key to any uh, learning, isn't it? But I'm in touch with them. On, I, they email me regularly. I text them regularly. I try. And, I don't want to be in their faces too much, but you know, I'm I'm pretty accessible. So, so 
all of these elements of technology are available to you, and so it's not just a matter of having a, a chalkboard or or, no. or a desk. So you can be virtually anywhere, and you can actually get be educated mm. in New Zealand nowadays. I think so. Yeah. Yes. So again, it, it, it doesn't come back to the location of Cheviot being no, that's true. Just somewhere out in the country. It's it's a matter of getting a, a fine education. Make Cheviot Area School your first choice in education. Pop in and see them any time, or you might like to give them a call on 03 319 87 87 or email the office at office at cheviot.school.nz.